Welcome to a brand new episode of Sequel Rights, the podcast where we take a look at the franchises that make you go, they made how many of those? And we give each and every sequel a fair trial. My name is Justin Camps, and I'm here with Elizabeth Helley and Tyler Hymanson. Oh, and we're back with a classic patented Sequel Rights <laughs> check-in. <laughs> Uh, Animated follow-up, one of our favorites. <laughs> That's right. Yay. <laughs> uh, we've patented the uh, phrase sequel rights check-in with the patent office. No, I'm kidding. Right. <laughs> um, but thanks for being back here with us. I hope you guys enjoyed our last uh, uh, round of episodes on the My Big Fat Greek Wedding <laughs> series. Uh, the third movie, man, we were joking around uh, a week ago or so that it came on to uh, digital at home real quick. Real yeah. quick. But the billboards are still all over town because they you have are. to buy them for a certain amount <laughs> yeah. of time. Yeah. <laughs> like everyone thought it was going to be a big hit, which, uh, you know, I don't know. I think that the longest billboard that I ever saw stay up in Los Angeles <laughs> was that billboard for the riches at the Paseo, Colorado. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> that FX no, no, there's still a was billboard like for. Or something? Yes. Yeah, yeah. There's still a billboard for Harry Potter and their Deathly Hallows uh, oh, on Hollywood. I've taken a picture of it before. Oh, my God, that's amazing. It's right by the Caliber Collision Shop where I had to take my poor, sad oh, car. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> That's yes. incredible. Yeah. That uh, that same ad by had a poster for Kyle XY uh, many years after it was canceled. Uh, oh damn. <laughs> anyway, we'll show me, we're Showtime's not keeping up here. <laughs> yeah. uh, before we get into even what we're talking about, let's talk about where people can reach out to us. Yes. Email us at sequelrights at gmail.com or find us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube at sequelrights. And this is really exciting. We're going to be having a first gathering for fans. It's on a deserted island, and there is going to be a uh, a martial arts competition. It's going to oh. be very exciting. It's going to be some sort of like <laughs> guess, mortal, mortal combat, combat happening. I don't know. know. Uh, some best, people that might not be mortal might be involved. <laughs> I, I don't know I don't why know. they call it that. Yeah. But uh, if you or any of your friends want to come and uh, join the Mortal Combat, uh, <laughs> <laughs> share the share the podcast out any way that you can. Social media, have whatever you use. Episodes that you've liked, episodes we might be talking about uh, a certain buddy uh, uh, in the future. There's some great episodes to revisit there. Uh, in the past, if you want uh, a quick catch up on the Chucky verse, that's mm. right. We have hours of content for you. <laughs> <laughs> hours and hours. Hours and hours. All right. Well, thanks for being here this week. And uh, as you've heard, we are following up on uh, one of our series where we did. You know, we've been talking about all the Mortal Kombat's, including the Mortal Kombat Legends series mm. from Warner Brothers Animation. Mm. And there is a brand new one out just this week, even. Uh, I believe it's out October 17th. And you can rent it October 31st, but you can buy it on Blu-ray right now. Um, and it's called Mortal Kombat Legends Cage Match. Rage Cage. Rage Cage. <laughs> uh, I believe you pronounced Mortal Kombat wrong. Oh yeah, sorry. Uh, we this week we're talking about Mortal Kombat <laughs> Legends <laughs> Cage Man. <laughs> it's canon. Uh, I know. I, I didn't even load up the sound. It oh like, my god! My mind is my mind is okay. Good. <laughs> well, then at least you were able to perform. Yeah, yeah. So uh, there you go. Um, but yeah, we're talking about Mortal Kombat Cage Match. Uh, why don't we? Uh, we'll talk about the details of who's in it after we listen to this amazing trailer. His name is Johnny Cage. His job... Keep up the autographing. ...is acting. But Yeah, actually, I'm really more into dramas. You should leave the jokes to me, son. But his passion is action. I just want to know how you got so cool. The truth is, I was bullied a lot in school. You gonna cry, little baby? My mom took me to the local dojo, and my life changed forever. Write this down. Kick first, be awesome, make money. So cool. From Warner Brothers Animation. Everyone decent? Wow. <laughs> Obviously, this is turning us both on. Can you feel that? 
All right. <laughs> we're always excited when, you know, uh, these things come about. And, of course, we've got to do a check-in because you Absolutely. Know, we talk about all the other ones. And that trailer, you just get a little taste of the 80s yes, music like, greatness just a taste. that yes. is in this. I do, 80s, 90s. I do love that even even in the trailer, they got someone to come in and do the trailer voice. Yes. Because right. yes. uh, the whole thing about this movie is extreme 80s uh, you know, it it looks like, and parody. this is the way I'm going to describe this is the excitement that I have over it, and and betrays a little bit of of how I feel about the movie. But it looks like a super violent, super slick version of Jam and the Holograms, <laughs> and the style of the animation is incredible. Like it's I would, I would watch cool. ten thousand shows that look like this. Yeah, it's it's pretty cool. Um, and uh, you know, as you might have heard, um. Joe McHale is back mm-hmm. as Johnny Cage. So that there is a reason to get excited right away, I think. Um, and then, uh, you know, uh, I don't know if we want to spoil it here, but we got some <laughs> other big names coming in. Maybe, yes. we, maybe we'll get to it as we go yeah. along. I think that, yeah, we can talk about the history of these animated yes. sequels. There is the first one that is kind of like a rehash of Mortal Kombat that we loved. Uh, and Scorpion's that, Revenge Scorp- is the first one. Each yeah. one has been like a backstory on a specific character, but also yes. moves the main story along, which was surprising. Yes. But this one's like full prequel, but still comments on the main story. Yes. And then there was Snowblind. And then what was the other one? I, battle yeah. of the realms. Battle, battle of the realms, which was the second, which one. was like a like a Mad Max type thing. Each of them have been in kind of different alter universes, using the Chronos and uh, you know the 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 hourglass of time to kind of do some timey wimey uh, universe stuff. But this appears to be back in the prime universe of Scorpion's Revenge. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it. I would definitely say too that like what we've liked about these is that it's like that anime style and it just insane violence, like yes. crazy insane kills and violence. And this one has, I think, less violence than some mm-hmm. of those other ones, but it has way more comedy because you yes. have Joel McHale yes. doing not just being a pop in, but being the main character. Oh yeah, the movie is like endless bits, yeah, and jokes, mm-hmm. and I would say. I mean, I was a little disappointed that there was less less violence. I was yes. too. I was too. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> I was but like, also, I guess maybe it wouldn't Where have made sense. Yeah, there weren't enough minions. <laughs> and then when you did have them, they were like demons, so it wasn't yeah. somehow as funny. It's, yeah. a very, it's a very different story than we've gotten in the other ones. It's very much the traditional, like, uh, superhero origin story kind yeah. of. Yeah. Right. Uh, a little bit, I guess. True, except he does kind of fall into this situation with these mm-hmm. nether realm demons like so we, so basically we see his awesome life as a d-list movie star but he's about to <laughs> reach the a-list with this cold open which i think for, as a podcast called sequel rights uh we all appreciate his catchphrase <laughs> for mind this, the gap okay. this was um, the opening sequence was maybe one of my i was maybe my favorite when was he fa- said it it was yeah. fantastic it was like uh, the movie starts off with like a vintage looking uh, like Warner Brothers logo and like yeah. this kind of like jazzy, you know, jazzy score. Yeah. And, and there's like a filter that makes it look like you're watching like an old like 80s movie yep. or whatever. Um, and you're just like thrown right into what is clearly, you know, we knew this is about Johnny Cage. So I'm assuming like, oh, yeah, this is one of his movies. We're right, watching. right. And just like slowly trying to figure out what's going on, and like the reveal of like the the, the movie's called Ninja Mind, right? yeah. yeah. <laughs> and the reveal of like w- what's going on, it's so funny that we're like chasing this uh, criminal through the subway, and he's like, you know, fighting with these police and trying to get away from something, and he's like freaking out. Yeah, he's shoving people, and then it escalates. He has a gun, yeah. and like he's running. But it's like, what is he running from? He ends up getting on the top of the train. And he's like, oh. No one, no one can get me here. Yeah, I'm totally safe. And then, like in the background, you see, you see someone climbing up, up an invisible the ladder. ladder. But then, like, yeah, 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 it's like climbing. You see a hand like climb up and grab where you think there'd be a ladder, but there's nothing, and it just keeps going up. And I was like, what? I was just like, what the fuck is going on? Like, is this a ghost or what? And then when the reveal happens, and you're like, oh my god, he's a mime. <laughs> Mime the okay. The fact that the line was not written as "mime the gap" and Johnny Cage came up with that, I yeah. was kind of like, he probably like should be allowed to do this because that's an incredible line. I, yeah. I do love the payoff of that that the line was supposed to be "gravity is a bitch." Yeah, and then he ends up saying that later, like at the end of the climax right, of this right, movie. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That was great. 
Uh, yeah, it's it's delightful. I also enjoyed that the director of the movie that he disrespects uh, <laughs> says that he was able to get this gig because he <laughs> directed a very popular Yugoslavian shampoo commercial. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Yep. Um, but, uh, you know, pretty. there's lots of fun shenanigans. We meet his assistant. Um, his long-suffering assistant. Chuck Gold. Yes. Chuck. Chuck Golden. Um and uh, we find out fairly quickly that his co-star, Jennifer, the big co-star that the whole movie was sold on, has gone missing. Yep. We don't know where she is. Where is Jennifer? Has anyone seen Jennifer? Oh, my gosh. You haven't seen Jennifer. Jennifer, Jennifer, Jennifer. Everyone's saying Jennifer a million times, and you're like, who the fuck is this person? Like, yeah. Um, well, it takes a long time for yeah. us to see her. Yeah, yeah and they keep ages. talking like, oh, we don't know where Jennifer is, and I keep thinking like, Part of me was like, are they just going to drop this? Because, right. Like, <laughs> I was wondering if she was like, oh, she died. We killed her. You know, yeah. like, at, yeah, the end. It, it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't it's come back cool for a twist. while. But yeah. it is a very, uh, it's a very good reveal later on. But uh, he he gets tasked, w- tasked with uh, going to find out where Jennifer is. Oh, we should say, too, that, you know, yeah, the whole movie is like 80s tropes, the film. Right. And one of them is the classic, like, <laughs> you're probably you're, wondering yeah, how you're I got here. Yeah. Wondering how I got. <laughs> I got <it>. So there's <laughs> like throughout the entire movie. And at first I was like, oh, God, this is so annoying. Yeah. But then when you're like, okay, I get it. It's part of the whole like yeah. 80s, yes. 80s riffing and everything. It was like fine with, I was fine with it. But it is throughout the whole movie, his like narrating voice. It's really in. funny. There's one part where he starts in the VO doing like, vocalization of porn music yeah. like he's like and then he's like yes i even do porn yeah, music like, in my yeah, vo yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> there's yeah. there's one part where he does the vo and then he says the exact same thing <laughs> right afterwards which yeah is very funny what did you say um <laughs> I, yeah i i almost feel like that uh there's parts of this movie where i feel like it was more fun for them to make than it was for us to watch yeah yeah uh, <laughs> which is not necessarily a bad thing mm-hmm it's funny. They do a lot of Hollywood jokes, which I was kind of like, it got, I don't know. Will this be funny to people in other states? Who knows? But well, for me, I, I felt a little bit like Ugh, the Hollywood jokes. But right. I, but I'm like, yeah, maybe it is more for other states that like think that stuff is really funny. Yeah. I think going, it, yeah. going to the Magic Mansion and they'll go, oh, my God, this is so I right. Know. Like the stuff about that and the stuff about like bleeping out the big man director that they couldn't talk about like it's the bleeping itself is funny but that being a joke is like not that funny i thought the like i thought the la jokes were so surface level that i was like people from la aren't gonna think this is funny that's true i did like i think everything with the assistant yeah i think it's all just dunking on la i liked everything with the assistant and then i did think that the oriental theater was kind of funny oh you mean the dan's (laughs) oriental world famous (laughs) dan's oriental theater yeah he's like yeah that's the one (laughs) that one yep (laughs) that was funny yeah i just got like part of that got a little bit tired for me but okay but what about the in joke that this is all about scientology yeah (laughs) it was yeah it was it It was the the turn about like how there's this crazy cult in the the hollywood this is how we all get jobs (laughs) literally everyone was in it except for his assistant like the director was in it (laughs) the agent was in it the manager was in it like the actress was in it so there was there was a part of me was that was like okay this is also this is funny but i was also like like should we be making fun of this when people like some not not about scientology but other crazy things other cults that, that yeah people, that people actually use as a basis for fucking Ugh. terrible well, beliefs when, about. when they were talking about the different murders and stuff, i mean there's some black dahlia shit in there too it's like hey, mm-hmm. look la has some fun history yes. uh <laughs> there's some great podcasts about it and i think that you should go and listen to them if you if you enjoy murder and death and uh you know the uh uh lack of respect for human life what it's if ryan great- murphy made the next Mortal uh. Kombat? <laughs> <laughs> oh god it would be called, uh, what would it be called? American Combat Story. <laughs> American <laughs> Combat Story, yeah, yeah, right. Ooh. Uh, Earth Realm Combat Story. <laughs> terrible, terrible jokes. We have terrible jokes, sorry. Yeah. So how about the um, the music, then? The music is very fun. It's yeah, so, so like, um, the songs are saying yeah. 
things. There, there's it's not subtle. Like there's a little a song that's literally like I'm so famous or whatever yeah, like, yeah. the whole time. It was funny. I was hoping for a little bit more information about like the songs in the end because it, it sound they must have all been created by the composers, right? Because there's no credits for licensing. They only list they they only list. It, there's a thing that says featured songs, but then yeah. they only list one song. One song. But it was like written by the composers and right. performed by the composers. But too. good for them because the songs are hilarious. They're, they're yeah, the and, funniest part of the movie. There's a yeah. lot of them. There's, there's like so at many. least eight. I don't know. There, there's a whole like you know we a lot of Mortal Kombat movies. We don't get car chases or car sequences. Yeah. There's a whole like driving around the city uh, and we hear th- at least three songs there. Yeah. There's a training montage yep. straight out of like right, you right. know um, <laughs> South Park. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> a rocky rock. I I do love in that chase sequence where it's like a Hollywood tourist type thing, and he hops yeah. on the bus and he's like, "I'll read your spec script." He's like, "How'd you know I'm a writer?" He's like, "Everyone's a writer." And okay, yeah. yeah. See, that's when I was like, "Hey, yeah. LA people, yeah. maybe other people aren't gonna get it." Yeah, 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 yeah. that was funny. Um, but yeah, the music was great, and they're all like you know clear ripoffs of specific yeah. songs and stuff. Um, <laughs> which like but it was music- like I have the tiger for the training sequence. Yeah, but they were and- fun. They're funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they fun. were super yeah. fun. And then also, it's just like it's such a great genre of music to riff on because so many of those songs were just saying exactly like they were <laughs> <Yeah>. that <laughs> verbatim. Yeah, yeah. Like, it doesn't even. It's not even parody. It's just like no, this this would have played on the radio. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I think they did a great job with that stuff. And it, you know. You know, the it makes sense that they were all created by the composers or whatever because there's yeah. probably like very low budget on these things. Um, but yeah, so uh, you know, Johnny Cage gets dispatched out to Jennifer's mansion yeah. to kind of mm-hmm. see what's going on, and and he sneaks in and uh, thinks he hears two ladies getting it on carousing. Upstairs. Yeah, <laughs> and he goes up and oh god, they're fighting. Yeah, so well, this the is the part is where happening. like. I ask you which of these characters are like from Mortal Kombat and who I are think not. Tyler neither? maybe knows. Oh, neither? Those two I didn't ladies? recognize many of the people in this. But, oh, okay. Um So the what's her name? Sorry. We've got, the, we've got Ashra. Ashra, yeah, white hat lady. She's not She doesn't anyone. look like that in Ashra I think no, I think Ashra's in the games. Okay. I mean, I know Jennifer's probably not, right? But yeah. but then the god that they're worshipping is... Shinnok. 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 Yeah, that sounds there. familiar, yes. yeah. Ashra's in Mortal Kombat 1, it says, so... Oh. There you go. Is oh, that the one that just came out? She's one of the Outland... Yes, okay, yes. She's one of the the princesses of Outland. Okay. So, yeah, there's these two women fighting, one, you know, all in white with a ridiculously large hat, yes. and then one, like, dressed in black and kind of a more tr- closer to a ninja-looking outfit. But we find out that they're all fighting over this scroll. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, she is in Mortal Kombat 1. Never mind. She's what, she just has a smaller hat, so you didn't recognize yes. her? Yes. Oh, okay. She has, like, the same story, basically. She's a demon from Netherrealm yes. who discovers She's a not magical wearing a sword hat. that She's not wearing cleanses a hat. her soul. As well no, as hat. Yeah. <laughs> the hat was the best part. Um, okay, so, yeah, they're fighting over this squirrel that is supposed to resurrect Chinook. I heard you say squirrel, and that would have been a better movie. Squirrel. <laughs> squirrel. Not to be confused with squirrels. Yeah. Squirrel. Is it? Am I pronouncing it? Am, am I just bad at no, pronouncing no, no, it? No, 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 oh. What, the word scroll? Scroll? Scroll. scroll. <laughs> Not scroll. Scroll. Scroll? Scroll. Scroll? Not squirrel. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. This is like. That was just wishful thinking on my part. Yeah. They were fighting over a squirrel. They're fighting over a squirrel, and Jennifer is nowhere to be found. <laughs> right. right. And they uh, escape and blow up the mansion. Yeah. But we see Ashra go back to talk to her master. Yes. Yeah. And I was like, whoa. Like, because that was like the one character I recognized. Christopher (laughs) Lambert? I would have. If it had been Christopher Lambert, I would have like. I was like, it was so obvious. I'm like, she's wearing the hat. Oh, I didn't. It's not the same hat. It's. Her pretty hat was close. like flat. His hat is pointy. It's pretty similar. Anyways, uh, <laughs> to meet around the bush, Raiden was Prince, there. But yes. then I think that's it for Raiden, right? He's yes. yeah. back at the end. Yep. No. We just see that she's reporting to him, yep. but then we never see him again, which is a bummer. He doesn't care about LA and he's not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> fair, fair. Yep. So she's working for Raiden, trying to get the scroll. And become human. The other lady is working for the Brotherhood of Shadows. Shadow. Who, Do you believe uh, in the power, the power of shadows? Wait, you're telling me a lady is working for the brother? <laughs> oh, right. That was funny, actually. <laughs> that was good. That was a good line. Um, and uh, yeah, there's a whole there's there's a whole like car chase scene. Yes, the, the one girl gets exploded by the bus. That's our first major kill. It's a great kill. 
she she basically is just out in the middle of the traffic and gets spluted, which is fantastic. Yeah. We also get to see Johnny Cage jump from a speeding vehicle into yes. another speeding vehicle, and he makes the crack. I see my stunt person do it all the time. How hard could it be? And then there's the 80s freeze frame, and he's like, it's really fucking hard. Yeah, I'm not going to do it. And, but then Chuck her, car is like, her car pulls up like right as he jumps. It's so funny. It's funny because I had just seen online the uh, Michelle Yeoh, Jackie Chan one, where he like barely grabs her and like like she still falls, but he like slowed her down a little bit. Oh my like, god! I yeah. just watched Super Cop three like this weekend, and I watched that whole movie. Yeah, yeah it's amazing. Uh, gosh. So yeah, Johnny Cage, no Michelle Yeoh, that's no. for sure. <laughs> but he has got his trusty assistant to just, save him. Just as a quick aside, like Michelle Yeoh in that movie is incredible, and like you know, like every Jackie Chan movie, like the the credits are just like all of the mishaps and all of the crazy like mm-hmm. B roll footage of the stunts. That movie is like for one of the most insane B roll like credits rolls I've ever mm. seen. It's yeah, I should watch nuts. it. It's, like Michelle Yeoh jumps a motorcycle onto a moving train. Right, right. Mm. I've heard of that. Mm. Yeah, it's crazy. <sighs> okay, so what else? Um, you know, we we talk about how this is a this is really an origin story a bit for Johnny Cage. He has uh, a mullet the whole time. I don't. Yeah, he does. I don't remember if this is like before the mansion thing or after exactly in the line of the movie. But we get like a full backstory on how he grew up. Oh uh, yeah. right, because oh this is like in the car on the way to the mansion because right. Chuck asks him like he thinks Chuck wants to ask him for ver- various entertainment industry advice, but he's just like I just want to know how you got so cool, yeah. which is really funny because it would be annoying. But I don't know whoever the voice actor. Actor did a really good job. He's I thought he was very sincere. Yes. Yeah. WWJCD. It's a, it's a, do, do some Brown is the name of the. I'm actor. not sure who that is. Yeah, but talented uh, voice actor. Yeah, he's apparently he's good. on the Lion Guard. Yeah. Oh, fun. Uh, yeah, I I think that whole sequence is fantastic. I think that the way that this whole I just pinpointed what I enjoy about kind of this fish out of water guy being dropped into this demonic possession thing. Yeah. It's very army of darkness. Mm. Uh, like he is basically an ash type character mm. being dropped. In this yes. Type of thing. No wonder you like him. Yeah. <laughs> Where he's basically just like, I don't know what's going on. I don't understand, but I'm going to yeah. get through it with swagger and braggadocio. I did yeah. like how that was sort of the overall arc of the movie because that like, I've only played one or two of the games, right? Mm-hmm. But that is what Johnny Cage always is. You're yes. like, why is there this regular ass guy <laughs> in this game with these ninjas and demons yeah, yeah. and yep. animals? And like, like, there's just wh- a guy who's a movie star with sunglasses? Like, I don't get it. Yeah. It, 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 yeah, I did enjoy. There's multiple times in the movie where like something really violent will happen, and he'll be like, "Ugh!" <laughs> like, <laughs> like that that one girl, the that one girl that gets uh, exploded into the giant NoHo sign, and she's right, like, right. she's yeah. like melting in this oh, fire, yeah, yeah. and then she jumps out, and he karate kicks her head off, and he's like, "Ew!" ew. <laughs> and he was like, "That was so awesome, but ew, <laughs> ew." Uh, <laughs> that was not the point that I was trying to make. Right. That was the, the thing that I was thinking of. I really love that the through line of this movie is that he was bullied as a kid. And like the thing that he that, that is his rallying cry every time that, you know, the chips are down is that like fuck bullies. Mm-hmm. Bullies suck. And if you let them do it, they'll keep doing it. I'm not going to tolerate it. And I, I thought that that was a very cool, um, truthful backstory for a guy like this. And if you think back, I mean, he's like a jerk and can be yeah. a chauvinist and horny or whatever, but he really doesn't bully people like you would no. expect him to, yes. including this assistant who, yeah, he makes him do some stupid stuff like sign autographs and get the car washed, but he's yeah. very, very nice to him yes. and, and like appreciates him and they have a nice relationship. Yeah. And, and I think that that's a great way to build a character like this. Yeah. And I think it's a good emotional core for a movie that is less than an hour and 20 minutes and very simple and a great backboard uh, for him to keep leaping off of yeah. and and satisfying every time. Yeah. I'm actually glad that the movie was so short mm-hmm. <laughs> because like lately, lately, uh, you know, even especially watching movies at home, I have a hard time like focusing sometimes. Mm. Um and uh, I have to say that, uh, you know, we had this company reach out to us yeah. uh, called Magic Mind recently. Not Ninja Mime. Ni- no. Magic not, Mind. Not Ninja Mime. <laughs> Magic Mind. <Yeah. laughs> uh, and they have this awesome, like, little bottle uh, that, you know, helps 
bring some focus into your life. It's like a little uh, like shot of uh, matcha and a bunch of other stuff in there. Um, they say that you're supposed to take it with your coffee in the morning. That's what I've been doing. It's a nice little shot of green with the coffee. Right. It's supposed to make you a little bit less jittery with the caffeine. And uh, I've been taking it for the past three days and uh, feel focused. Yeah, I've been I feel like I, I could do a training montage. I had it with my I had it with my I was literally like having a, you know, cuz it says that you should like have it with coffee or not. Yeah. And I drink coffee every morning and I was like having one sip of coffee, one sip of the magic mind and it's like it tastes great. Listen to the montage. And uh, <laughs> you know, yeah, it, 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 you know, the the all natural ingredients in there like really help, you know, smooth things out and Sure. I did not look at my phone once during this movie. Oh, oh. okay. Yeah, I really like how it's just kind of like a little shot because a lot of times these drinks that have things that are good for you can sometimes be in like a really big bottle and you're like yeah. i don't want to drink all of this but this is like a small shot and it tastes really good yeah it doesn't uh, taste like trash yeah <laughs> it tastes great and i don't know if this is like part of one of the things that's advertising but i felt less hungry so i think it's kind of just like a little jump start in your morning gets your metabolism and your system going and then you know you can focus on your work instead of being like God, i'm so hungry i need a snack it was a nice yeah. it was it's a nice little thing to do for yourself in the morning and it was uh glad that they reached out to us yeah for sure and you know like uh we definitely recommend it and if if it's something that you guys are interested in we have good news for you because we can give you guys a uh website to go to <gasps> specific the website. world wide web. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it helps us. It helps them. It's great. It's called, uh, you can just go to magicmind.com slash S R as in sequel rights, sequel rights. That's right. that's right. That's how easy to remember. S R sequel rights. Yes. And, uh, if you go there to that exact website, you can get up to 56% off wow. your subscription for the next Such 10 a specific days. Number. And, uh, you just have to, you have to go to that website and use the code S R 20 S R 20. Yeah, we'll put it in the show notes, too. It's easy to yeah, remember. Easy to remember. You can That's find SR20. it in the show notes and uh, get some some money off on this awesome drink. Uh, it's really fun. And, you know, yeah, I don't know. It's been really helpful. Yeah, it's good stuff. So there you go. Um, but uh, I will say about the length of the movie, I was looking there, there, there. Like, I didn't look at my phone, but I did pause it once because I wanted to see how much time was left because I was getting a little bit worried about the lack of crazy deaths right <laughs> and i was like oh god we're i'm already like an hour in and nothing like that crazy has happened so sure. one of the signatures of these movies has been the x-ray yes shot kill mm-hmm. where mm-hmm. you see the bones and the guts breaking and i i was getting toward the end too and i was like oh man no x-ray shot yeah. like what's happening and eventually they get to it but it took a while it does take a while i just like yeah i i, I don't know that that was a th- this was the biggest bummer, I mean, I think for me for the movie because I remember the last one and I the last just, one's insane. Yeah, I remember just like laughing with joy and yeah, like it's... insane like kills the entire throughout the entire film basically. And this one, I was just like, I get that it's a different story, and we kind of have to like slowly bring him in to this world. We're not immediately in the like crazy Mortal Kombat world. We're like in the normal world. First, Do we think that then... the lack of violence was in respect to the late great Gilbert Godfrey? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. he gets burned alive. He would have loved it. Okay. <laughs> he also gets he also gets totally destroyed. He has one of the best deaths in the movie. Yeah. Okay. We got to talk about him yes. because the movie's dedicated to him. It is. Yeah. And this is actually, I think, the last, last project. Is, yeah. I think so. Yeah. And we have like. Over our sequel rights time, we've had many, many storied actors who yes. their last project was a weird animated sequel. And, and we had him in uh, and, Pro- yeah, and many Problem Gilbert Child. Movies. Yes. Yeah. yeah. At least Problem Child. I, there was probably other ones. Uh, he voiced a bug in one of the stories. <laughs> 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 but what was it? The Jimmy Stewart what did like that um, American Tale. Tale. That was yeah, his last yeah, film. Yeah. The, one of the Brave Little Toasters had somebody big that it was their last film. Oh, and, yeah. yeah. You've got, you've got uh, Unicron is... Um, uh, uh, oh, yeah. We haven't watched that. Orson Welles. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we haven't. So. We, we didn't watch the animated Transformers. Right, yeah. So. Anyways, it's a story Not yet. thing. Uh but he has he has like a very short scene, but his, it's a story it's, thing, it's a story thing of us shoveling dirt onto, <laughs> onto acting legends. No, because they're not bad. I mean, and no, it's a no. nice performance. It's sure. like oh, I get to hear him one more time. You know, like I was watching it, and my roommates were like, "Oh my god, is that Gilbert Gottfried?" I'm like, "I'm pretty sure it is." You know, I didn't I know. know, and I, it sounded like him. I was like, "Well, that's weird." They're having somebody do a voice. Yeah, and yeah. It was actually, him. I was like, "Oh, that's great." He's yeah. he's the sleaze bag agent. Of, yeah. Uh, who likes Genre to put Cage. the word fucking in front of every yes. single They must line. have recorded a long time ago because yeah. he's been dead he died for a minute. in 2021. Yeah. Yeah. 
It's well, that's how long it sometimes takes. Yeah, to get animated, animated yeah. stuff done. Um, his character was really funny. Yeah, I was thinking, I I was like wanting to do an impersonation, but I can't. One, I can't do it. Two, maybe it's not you know uh, uh, respectful or whatever. Yeah, but I was gonna say like after they made finishes how many their deal. fucking sequels or whatever. Yeah, because he yeah, you know, he just makes he just makes he just puts the word fucking after everything. Yeah. And it was really funny. Like, you're going to put on those fucking tights and be in that fucking superhero movie. <laughs> it is. There are sag jokes in the movie, too. There are. He's like, if I'm in trouble, call the police. Actually, don't call the police. police. Call the <laughs> actors union because they're better and they're more hardcore. <laughs> yeah. But then he He's tries like, to call them and like he, they don't come to help because he didn't pay his yeah, dues. Was, so the union. Yeah, that was great. But um, yeah, this was funny with the whole like big guy thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And they're like bleeping out, which they're talking about Zack Snyder, right? <laughs> I was assuming they were talking about Steven Spielberg. Spielberg? Yeah. 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 Spielberg? Yes, because they yes, said but... like drama to family right. to yeah. Yes, they were uh, yeah. clearly Spielberg. <laughs> Spielberg is making a superhero movie called Adventures of Super Guy or something. Like that. It's called The Adventures of Tintin, and <laughs> right. and it's a masterpiece. Uh, it's a great movie. It is a great movie. It is good. Um, but yeah, this is the first time that we make yours, Peter Jackson, you coward. (laughs) (laughs) I know no one went to see it. Okay. Um, but yeah, this is the first time with his agent that we realized that, uh, his agent was a demon and we, this is the, he, he fully transforms. And like, I watched that scene back again and I was like, Oh, he's giving away all that's happening in the movie, in the, in the, you know, future parts of the movie. But you know, you don't know that at the time he's talking about, he's about part of the secret club and everyone. I mean, all reps are demons. We know this is true. Apologies to Matt Darnell. If you're listening, Uh, but you know, (laughs) but I thought that was funny. And um, yeah, he gets uh, launched out of the, out of a window and lands on some spikes. Impaled in the atrium. And yeah, that was hilarious. Right, right as poor, right as poor Chuck is, is getting, getting a phone number, getting the phone number of the uh, the secretary there. That was so funny, um, but yeah, uh, it's a bummer that you know he's passed away. But yeah, I thought that was a great, you know, I don't think that's an, I don't think that's a final performance to be embarrassed about or anything. No, I thought it was really funny. <laughs> Yeah. Especially because it's a voice performance. I mean, like, he's a good actor, but the voice is, you know, he's known for that voice. Absolutely. So let's get into the Jennifer of it all. Yes. That's the next big thing. Jennifer so, as herself. Jennifer. Her. In the credits. Yeah, the, this is great. <laughs> if you watch the trailer or know anything about this movie, you might know that uh, one of the voices is done by Jennifer Grey. Gray. Who we have extensive uh, Indeed. You know, right. details with, with Dirty Dancing we did. Um, but uh, turns Just out. Just very quickly on that, uh, Abby was watching uh, Modern Family, and I mm. was like, where do I know this person from? And I was like, oh, that god-awful Dirty Dancing <laughs> made for TV. <laughs> oh. oh the, uh, Sarah Highland. <laughs> oh, oh, right, 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 right. God, you, you knew her from that and not Modern That's Family? That's I remember Correct. her Oh, from. my God. <laughs> no, and I was okay. like, she's familiar to me. Oh, boy. <laughs> Sequel rights problems right yeah. there. So sick. Um, but it turns out that she the, brought a watermelon. Yes. The head of the Brotherhood of Shadows or whatever is literally Jennifer Grey herself. Yes. It does say Jennifer Grey as herself, which I thought was hilarious. It's so Good funny. Stuff. And she comes like the, her big reveal. She's wearing like one of her iconic outfits. Uh, and it's just so funny that I love that. Uh, she was down to do this. Yes. yes. It's great. <laughs> and, and it's like set in the 80s, early 90s. Like it's supposed to be like peak Jennifer Grey. Yeah, when she like, would have been the biggest star yes. that this movie was. Yes. Yeah. I think that's probably part of the reason why she signed on because like the producers are like, hey, we want you to represent like the epitome of 80s stardom. Yes. Yeah. And uh, you're you're gonna turn into a crazy demon at the end, yeah. <laughs> but you're gonna get to have a lot of juicy lines. That's cool. I mean, I don't know. I have more respect for her after this. It's like, pretty not fun. that I didn't yeah. respect her before, but yeah, I'm like, yeah. wow, the fact that you can make fun of yourself like that is incredible. It's pretty fun. It's so great, and she, you know, she reveals that uh, everybody's in on it. I think you already mentioned this, but like mm-hmm. all, everyone he knows, basically the director the from to- Yugoslavia, the <laughs> agent, yeah. the manager, and and this all happens. I love that they're talking about the Magic Mansion. The entire yes. time, which is <laughs> yes. uh, uh, which is magic cha- like magic castle, and they 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 do the you're entering into a secret society, and then they walk in, and it's just like what it's like to go to the magic castle. It's just a bunch of magicians. Fucking yeah, around. a guy turns cards into doves. I'm, I'm like, like, have you been to magic castle? Yeah. Oh, I'm the only one who hasn't I've been. been twice. You've been to, oh my god, it's pretty. Um, great. I, can you vouch for it's me? Pretty, <laughs> I wish. I, you know, 
Glory had the hookup in the last. Oh, one. okay. Get you in. No, I'm just kidding. Tyler can get you <laughs> I need in. To go. Um, no, it's fun. But uh, it is funny should. that underneath the magic castle of this movie, there are the secret subway tunnels of That's LA right. that go all across town. And I'm like, mm, that they're part doing like not. BDSM stuff <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and worshiping demons. Literally. That part's probably real, but the subway <laughs> tunnel is not real. That's where they actually filmed Eyes Wide Shut. Oh, yeah, yeah. Speaking of Scientology, ayo. Oh. <laughs> oh, man. But yeah, this new this new lady takes uh, Johnny Cage down there, and we slowly learn about uh, Shino, 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 Shino and all that stuff. They're part of a cult that's trying to, you know, uh, it's a cult of demons that were banished from Nether Realm mm-hmm. somehow into Earth Realm, mm-hmm. and they uh, instead of trying to get back, found that there was a scroll with a bunch of Greek on it for some reason that I think is tied to Johnny Cage. Um, no, it's tied to my uh, big fat Greek wedding. <laughs> I did think that was, yeah. That's where it says that that guy is number their one, brother. Number one scroll. Yeah, it's, the, it's actually the dad's diary. Yeah. It's taken out of the dad's diary. <laughs> well, I guess like this whole thing about, uh, uh this whole thing about Johnny Cage having right. blood so of he a has god. special blood. So you think it's a great god. Type well, apparently thing. in the, in the, the lore of Johnny Cage and some of the games he ha- he is descended of like a uh, Mediterranean lineage or something. So <sighs> that's, that's why fair. Chose, I get why they had to do that, but it is a little you make know. him the son of Kratos, you coward. It's, it's, <laughs> a, little, it's a little Ray Palpatine to me. I'm I like, know, did yeah. he need to be anybody? I just think he's cool to be just Johnny Cage somehow. Johnny Cage Johnny survived. Cage returned. <laughs> Somehow Shinnick returned. It was just funny that like they really like laid into that in the special features. Like, no, 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 this we didn't just make this up. It's in yeah. the lore, so the fans will love this. Well, it just did seem weird that it was like I mean, I thought it was funny that the assistant had had to learn Greek to read a contract previously. Yeah. That was pretty funny. But yeah, otherwise it seems weird that it's Greek and not some weird, like made up nether realm language. It was weird to me, yes. Yeah. So that would make sense why, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, so they're trying to bring Chinook back, and um, spoiler alert, they succeed. They, they do. <laughs> I love, so like, they, they got Johnny Cage trapped in a thing. Uh, he's he's like tied to a slab, and they're cutting him open. He does look cool. Like, they put, like, it's like he has his mullet, and they put, Oh, yeah, like, they put all these demonic like, uh, like markings on him, yeah. Like, yeah. It looks pretty cool. And I, and I love that, uh, you know, they raise Chinook, and I thought it was really funny that, like, Apparently, some of the people in the cult maybe are just regular people that didn't really know what was going to happen. Because why? Why do like half of the cult people run away screaming, and the other half like go like, "Oh hell!" Because I think some of them were actually demons, and some of them were just there for power. That's and, what like, I'm saying. Like yeah. they were just like regular ass people. Not everybody yeah, yeah. was a demon. Well, they weren't regular ass people. They were, you know, the Hollywood That's elite. Right. True, 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 true. I just meant like uh, regular. Let's ass just say it. The Kardashians. Human beings. Oh. They're, they're real humans. And I just thought that was funny, right? Um, well, you would to, in order to ke- make your cult sustainable, you have to, you know, recruit some underlings and real humans, and, right? That's right. Yeah, to give it the to give it the uh, realness. And now everything. you're thinking with Scientology. <laughs> <laughs> I do live pretty close yeah. to the Scientology. <sighs> um, one of the funniest moments I thought for me uh, was when he was like tied to the slab and he's like trying to get rescued. And there's uh, this whole uh, situation that happens. What? What are you saying? I said, go fuck yourself. (laughs) (laughs) It's so great because, like, you can clearly tell what he's saying. Like, it's so obvious. And then he comes out and says, go fuck Fuck yourself. So great. So great. It's good stuff. Uh, And then... um, we end up with a the denouement of everything that we've been waiting for for this movie of lots of crazy kills, lots of crazy x-ray, all did, sorts of fun stuff. I did love the like gloriously like gross way that like Chinook came out like yes. this, this crazy sculpture of like these two hands and it's all made out of blood and it opens up and he's in the hands and then there's like a blood staircase that appears. I thought that was kind of cool and gross. I'm kind of misremembering the order, but did the NoHo sign already go down before they even get to the Magic Castle? Yeah, okay. that was like way early. Then. Oh, yeah. right. Okay. I do think it was funny that the No just burned down. Yeah. <laughs> <just said> no. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> so stupid. It's another twist on the Holly Woo from Bojack, but yeah. <laughs> yeah <that's> um, <laughs> but yeah, um, then they go to the Oriental Theater, which is hilarious. Yes. They're underneath it, thanks to the uh, BDSM the subway. The subway tunnels, yeah. Yeah, he just appears up there and just starts like obliterating, people just exploding into yeah. it with lasers out of his hands and the people there getting their photos with fake Spider-Man, or fake, uh, sorry, Superman. not Spider-Man, Superman Man. and Batman. Warner whatever. Brothers characters. Yes, of course. Warner yeah. Brothers characters. But like, also, you don't even need to go in a tunnel. You can just walk from the Magic Castle to the Chinese. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's really right close. there. That's a Hollywood fact. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Only Angelinos, <laughs> no. <laughs> um, but yeah, it is a whole thing. And speaking of Spider Man, we do like during the fight, he does get almost like a Spider Man two moment where the the people of Los Angeles decide to join in and start throwing rocks at Shinnok. But then it just kind of ends. I always, <laughs> I always hate it. I always hate it. I was like so hoping that he would just turn it and explode them all. Right. Yeah. He exploded a lot of them. Yeah, yeah. It was but, pretty funny. But it was before that. I wanted him to be like, stop it. Yeah, because they they happen. started throwing rocks and stuff at him. But also, like, where do you even get rocks at the Chinese? It like, was the no rubble rocks. from him being kicked. Oh, up God. Okay, ground. you're right. You're right. Sorry. I'm looking for plot holes where they've clearly covered it. <laughs> oh, yeah, obviously. Yeah. I did enjoy that him getting his face slammed into the concrete <laughs> was the impression in his uh, his Grauman's, I'm sorry, Dan's. Dan's uh, uh, yes. Oriental. Yes. Oriental. Yeah. You know, just say that. Uh, but... <laughs> Yeah, the people that help him, it, it was kind of funny that none of them ran away, like, the yeah. entire time. The people yeah. got exploded, but no one ran away. They all just stood there watching there the were whole a couple, time. There were a couple of shots where it just looked like groups of people standing in, like, a line, and I was like, why are they still there? But they're still they there. I think just, it's part of a movie or something. They're still there just to later be like this. Fuck him up, Johnny. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's, like, a, up, there's like a hero kid in yeah, the crowd sorry, yeah. that's like, Fuck him up, Johnny. <laughs> it is fantastic how this looks. Like I said, this looks like right. a super slick, super violent episode of Gem. Yeah. And at this point, when they're above, like it's full on Ghostbusters, purple sky, yeah, it's like lightning, tornado, uh, and and the uh, exterior of Dan's Oriental Chinese Theater uh, has happens to have the dragons of the Mortal Kombat logo, mm. and there is just some fantastic looks here. Of it's such a ripe. Like if you went back and made like a a uh, army of darkness, big trouble in little China movie like this that was hyper violent, it would actually. You know what? Don't do it. I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> and also, it Johnny, I don't know what Johnny and Cage's powers are in the game, but he starts getting this like phasing kind of green yes, thing where that's he can. Exactly how it looks. That's how it looks yes. in the game. Okay, because I was like, well, I never knew him to be able to do anything like that. But I think yeah, it's it was, called like shadow kicks. He something. gets some like sometimes he has it, sometimes he doesn't. But the thing that he always has is doing the splits for a dick punch. Oh, <laughs> and he certainly does that here. Okay, <laughs> they uh, yeah, in the special feature, they specifically show footage from Mortal Kombat 11. Yes, uh, mm -hmm. where he has the green, okay, green yes. shadow kick, where he moves exactly like that, where it looks like there's multiple versions of him, like kind of like gliding across. Well, it looked cool because, like you're saying, this is all so colorful and neon yeah. and blue and purple and green and really just like bright colors that you were not used to seeing in these movies. Like yeah. sometimes they can be very pretty dark drab. and red yeah. and black and that's pretty <laughs> much it. And there's blood everywhere, you know? So talking about Warner brothers movies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Especially when they go to nether realm. Yes. I mean, yeah, yeah, it's like a lot or whenever they try to bring it, all the mortal copies. Like, we're going to bring nether world here. We're going to yeah. go the, to yeah. nether world yeah. this time. It always looks ugly. Yeah. Uh, not in Mortal Kombat 1, but I, there's reasons for that, I suppose. But yes, it, 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 he has the moves. It looks very awesome. Um, and it has the classic 80s. Uh, he gets his ass kicked, and yeah. then he's like, not today. I gotta get up. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, he remembers back about the bullying. Yeah, yes. and there's that little back. kid in the crowd. And it yep. works. The yep. kid wakes him up, yeah. And then, and then he gets to say the And the then he line. uses the written line from Ninja Mime, <laughs> Gravity's a bitch. And yep. it's a pretty great kill. Yeah, yeah, with the dragon. He does get, like, I, I feel like the most devastating x-ray thing that we get is when he kicks Shinnok's leg and completely shatters I think shatters it might be that the only one is Yeah, there's Shinnok. only two. There, uh, there's two, yeah. There, oh, it's his but leg they're both Shinnok, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the, that's it, yeah. Yeah. I mean, they look really cool because even those, it's like got all the neon in the background. Yeah, too. Right. yeah. It like looks like the X-ray, but then also like the you know the the aesthetics of this movie. Um, 
Yeah, and then he he doesn't die, but he falls back into the portal, and then they reverse. Yeah, the portal. Chuck seals it, and yep. those cool dragon blood things come and grab all the demons that have come out. And then twenty years pass. <laughs> yeah you see all the you see they make multiple ninja mime sequels yes. all the way up to four i think yeah like he has a whole career where he like gets, rises and then starts falling from grace yeah. and then gets the invitation to the he, he mysterious fat, island there's that photo there's yeah. that, a scorpion's revenge yeah yeah which yeah was really interesting to me because i was like the whole movie i was like oh so this one has nothing to do it's like totally separate. yeah well because it seems so far away yeah. like 20 years yeah. or whatever and then yeah at the well, very end it's like oh jk leads up to when the popper Wars. paparazzi was outside his house i was like oh is that like one of the like spies com- yeah is that one of the combatants yeah, yeah like now but yeah yeah but uh, uh yeah i don't know that's about it it is about it it was a short movie um I, oh, 20 minutes about, I yeah. feel like before we get into ratings, I overall enjoyed the movie. I do not feel like it lived up to the promise of the style that it had, which I thought was spectacular. I want to just call out how what an incredible job all the animators did on this movie mm-hmm. and how warm and applaud Warner animation for allowing projects like this to exist for feature length adult animation. I know I say this every single time Mm -hmm. and anything that we say, we're talking about the judges in this movie does not um, diminish that in the slightest. I want 10,000. I mean, I hope they keep making them, but it's crazy because I think the last time we talked about one of these was before all of the, the stuff getting taken off HBO Max yep, and, and yep, yep. Zaslaving. A lot, a lot has changed. Yeah. yeah. A lot but has this changed. Is, this was obviously in the pipeline and they still put it out and it's still out on physical and rental only before yep. it even hits Max, the one to watch for HBO. <laughs> and uh, so that's great. Yeah. And it looks can... great. There's a, there's, there is so much creative care and effort put into this thing. And I love it. And it is a joy to experience. I do think it's interesting that like, you know, uh, the initial, what you would think of the initial promise of like the Mortal Kombat Legends idea would be that it's all these like separate stories or Mm -hmm. you can just tell whatever about one of the characters. And it's interesting that they have chosen to make kind of like a continuity between them Mm -hmm. and build a world, you know, which ultimately I think is cool too. I just thought, you know, I thought, oh, maybe this is one finally that's like totally separate, but... It's and I think that part of that is because they had the star power of Joel McHale and right. there's there's all the bits and some of them fall short. I feel like that the comedy of this movie is sometimes a little bit forced. A little. There are some jokes that didn't hit as yeah. well as others, that's for sure. But, I mean, I think he still is giving a really good performance. Oh, he I is. Mean, Absolutely. He clearly is. I, I mean, he's reading a script, but he's also making shit up that they, yes. yeah, I'm sure that they, it doesn't matter as much in anime about matching the mouths. I mean, a little bit, but if yeah. you made the balls to the wall version of this movie with Joel McHale, is like an Ash type character in this, that was it, mortal Kombat or not. Um, I would lose my mind for it. Yeah. Like it's like, it would be one of those beyond fest movies that would go down. In it's like, you think they history. have kind of the room to do a little bit of whatever. Cause some of them have been yeah. insane violent and it is rated R. Yeah. Well, Straight and a lot R. of times, you know, when you have your comic relief and you try to make them the main character, all of a sudden, sometimes it doesn't translate yeah, as well. Hard. But yeah. I mean, that's why the, this movie is short and sweet and cute. And yeah, he's still just, I just saw him in, uh, it's a wonderful knife, which is also coming out this Christmas. Mm-hmm. And he's ah. just so funny. Like he's great. I love Joe McKayla. Yeah. He's fantastic. So are we at a rating system? Let's is that do it. Arrived to. Yeah. Why not? Um, boy, I don't know if I have one. <gasps> Squirrels. How many mm, exclusive? Greeks how many demons popped by a bus? Would you give? <laughs> <laughs> How many demons pop by a bus? Yeah. I don't recall what I have given the other ones, but I feel like this is my least favorite. I think of, that's right. Of all of them. I'm sorry. Uh, so I think I'm going to give it like a five. Mm. I'm going to give it five demons exploded by a bus. Here's the thing. I think that the animation style, the music um, is all pretty awesome. For me, I, I don't know what, it was if I just wasn't like in the right mood or what, but like uh, I felt like Joel McCarroll's like performance was a little bit not 
like a little bit wooden sometimes. And a mm. lot of the jokes didn't hit for me. And I was like rolling my eyes a bit. I rolled my eyes at the porn thing. Um, and uh, I really was like, I, I would say like above all of that, really disappointed by the violence. Even when it gets, even when it like starts to pop, quote unquote, pop off towards the end. I kept thinking the whole time like, oh, they're saving it for some crazy thing at the end. That's where all the budget went for all this crazy mayhem at the end. Um, and I just felt like even that, it was like not that good. I don't know. There yeah. was like some demon guts exploding, but I feel like there were so many other ones in the previous films where I was like, Oh fuck. Or like, yeah, Oh right, my right, God, right. that's so crazy. Like his eyes pop. Like the, I feel like nothing hit that level at all yeah. in this movie. So I was really disappointed by that. Cause that's been one of the things that like, even if the movie wasn't super great, I, I think it's I'm the a, only place you can see things. Yes. Like right. really. And I've been really like carried by the insanity yeah. of yeah. The violence, yeah. which is mortal combat. And, and I don't feel like there was much of that. Yeah. In this movie. And, Letting animators be the sickos that they are. Yeah, <laughs> and maybe it's because there weren't as many characters, or I don't know. It's right. Just like, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna give it a little bit higher and give it six uh, bus Fair. popped demons, um, because I think the only the issue with the other ones, and this is you know now it's been a year or more since we watched those. Like they do all kind of clump together in my mind like i can barely remember the difference between all of them and yeah. it gets really samey whereas this one like i know i'm not going to forget it because it's mo- a little bit more character driven and um does have less characters and for me because i don't really have that connection to all the games and stuff i, I think i just was like oh it's one character that i like and an actor that i know and it's funny and i re- the visuals really like the color and the fun like 80s 90s uh look and everything for sure um was good for me but yes i mean i agree the number one thing about this movie is that the violence doesn't live up to the other ones which sounds crazy to say to be like i want to advocate for more insane violence and deaths but like that's the funniest thing and that you can do it with animation in a way that you can't do it in you know in in person or with cgi and so um yeah i really did also miss that too it just felt like it was there more towards the end but it just felt like right not as creative somehow yeah it took yeah. too long it wasn't as creative or crazy um and i don't know why they really decided to do it that way maybe just because it's johnny cage but i guess you could have i feel like you could have figured out more ways there's a little bit less in. crazy powers and stuff yeah in this. Well, i did laugh when they snuck one in with the uh high school bully getting oh, yeah. his arm oh, or whatever yeah. Yeah, that, that was, one, that was, was the one moment awesome. where i was like oh. yeah yeah but then that's it yeah, for yeah. ages yeah. so and i think that that's um i don't want to call it the director here but i think that you know when you have more comedy you have more there's different sensibilities here right and i think that i i'm also going to go six demons mm. pop by bus i agree with everything that both of you said and i think that my largest disappointment with this movie is that it does not live up to the promise of how cool it looks and the style and knowing what these the the sheer creativity and like oh my god did they really just do that of the previous mortal Kombat legends movies seeing that opening sequence and seeing the style that it was in I was so excited to see how far they could push it Mm. and it felt a little safe Mm -hmm. um, and it felt like that there was that the animation outpaced the writing in the direction of it and that is not to knock anybody's efforts on this. I think that it's incredibly enjoyable. I'd recommend watching it but when it started, I was like, holy fuck, I am so excited for this. Yeah. And it didn't quite reach the levels of the other ones, but it did make me excited for, um, you know, all the different styles and all the different things that, that can happen with animation. And I hope that despite the climate that we're in and everything that's happened with Cartoon Network and everything else, that uh, these type of movies can continue to be made. You know what also also reminded me of? I was like, remember that Highlander anime? Why don't they make more of those? Yeah, that was cool. That was yeah. very cool. Anyways, <laughs> they should. Well, you know, speaking of the uh, future of the Mortal Kombat Legends franchise, okay. uh, I did find an article um, on ComicBook.com um, titled "Mortal Kombat versus DC Movie Pitch," but rejected mm-hmm. by Warner Bros. Oh. So they did like an interview with Jeremy Adams, who is the um, the writer behind all of the Mortal Kombat mm-hmm. Legends films, including some of the other um, 
The other uh, Warner Brothers animated things like Batman Soul of the Dragon and Justice League War World. And so they interviewed him and they specifically asked. They, they, hey, they you've asked, made an Injustice game. Like, what's the deal? Yeah, they were like, ever since Scorpion's Revenge, comicbook.com was like, ever since Scorpion's Revenge came out, like, uh, I was like, we need DC versus Mortal Kombat. And Jeremy Adams' response was, I would lower your expectations. I don't know if they have any plans to do more. I do know that we pitched that a while ago, but it was kind of rebuffed. Hmm. Um, and he kind of like, he goes on to say like, at the end of the day, I don't know if they're ever going to do any more. I hope they do. And I hope they call me to be involved. So of Mortal it, Kombat Legends at all? That's what it sounds Aww. like. I mean, I guess it's not like super clarified, but I, I would guess like you, like you talked about the changes that have been yeah. going on with streaming and like who are the, who these movies are for. Maybe the sales aren't super great. I don't know the numbers or anything. Right. Um, but maybe they're considering not doing more. I don't know. That would be an absolute travesty because these movies are incredibly fun. I will say that right now on HBO Max, there's this show called Scavenger's Reign that is an adult sci-fi animated show that I cannot recommend enough, and I really implore everybody to watch it and stream it and support animation as a medium and pushing it beyond children. Is that the thing that looks kind of like this? I think uh, my roommate was watching it. A little it. bit. It has, it has a very bespoke style. Titmouse is the animation studio Maybe I'm behind thinking it. of something else. Um, but, uh, You're not thinking of like the Harley, Harley Quinn show? Or no, what? I'm not okay. thinking of that. Also I great. It up but um, I yeah, I very much uh, want this medium to, to thrive. And that makes me very sad. Yeah. I mean, you would think that uh, with another live action sequel coming out yeah. uh, at some point, I don't know when, but um, you know that they would maybe try to capitalize on that. Is that thing shot? Is it still happening? I think it's still happening. I don't know if it was already shooting or what. And it's exci- I mean, the, the Mortal Kombat sure. one is fantastic. Actually, if you guys want to hear us talk about it, let us know. Yeah, uh, I love, I love to talk about Tyler's it. Tyler's been playing it. <laughs> yeah. I, don't, I don't have it. Tyler's yeah. been playing it though. And, but I hear that it's great. It is. So, yeah, I think uh, that's probably going to bring us to the end here of our review of Mortal Kombat Legends Cage Match, which, uh, as we mentioned earlier, you can get, uh, you know, you can get um, on Blu-ray and digital right now, and I believe it will be available to rent on October 31st. Not sure when it'll hit max, but uh, the one to watch for HBO. But at, it will at some point. It will at some point. And watch it if you do. Rent it if you can. Uh, it's a travesty if they don't make more of these. Sucks. Yeah. Um, and, uh, before we go here, uh, Eliz, where can people, uh, reach out to us? Yeah. Send us your suggestions for what franchises you want to hear us talk about, um, uh, probably next year or maybe later this year, if we have time, uh, sequel rights at gmail.com or find us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube at sequel rights and share, uh, your favorite episodes, uh, rate and review us wherever you can. Uh, anything you can do to let other people know about the show uh, is highly appreciated. Yeah, and, uh, you know, Tyler mentioned it a little bit at the top here, but uh, in case you didn't know, there's a brand new season of Chucky out on Sci-Fi. It's on Sci-Fi. It's on Peacock the next day, I believe. Peacocktober. (laughs) <laughs> and uh it's season three season three of chucky a chucky show that is like you know if you haven't heard our previous episodes it's like direct continuity with all the chucky films it's great it's got jennifer tilly in it all the time it's, it's awesome. got devin sawa devin again sawa. yeah i think multiple sawas. A character. multiple sawas and uh i believe n- this week uh as you hear this uh uh, this will come out on wednesday uh wednesday night is the mid-season finale so there have been four episodes out, and we are going to be talking about uh, those four episodes next week. I believe. Yeah, Chucky's been texting you about it, right? He has. Yeah, and I'm going to be. Uh, I'm going to read some. Of there, I mean, there's been honestly been so many texts. Oh my god! I won't, I won't okay. read, he texts every week. Wow. But, but I won't. I won't read all of them. But it's been okay. Fun. Okay. You're um, popular. I know. I, <laughs> I'm, I'm best friends. I'm yeah. on his top. Top 10 or whatever. Um, Anyways, yeah, we'll be talking about uh, the first four episodes of Chucky Season 3 if you want to get caught up. Um, That's our next big check-in before we hit the holidays. Chuck-in. (laughs) Chuck-in. Terrible. Oh, boy. All right. Well, thanks for being here uh, for our trip through the neon-drenched 80s with Johnny Cage. Uh, We'll see you guys next week for uh, the first four episodes of Chucky Season 3. All right. See you then.